the tupelo wood I used comes from Louisiana, but when I think of chickadees, I think of them chirping at me while I brush through hemlocks here in Maine. To get the pose I wanted for this piece, I decided to make a crude clay model. Once I had the position how I wanted it, I traced the model on the block of Tupelo and cut it out on the bandsaw. To save a little time, I knock off some of the high corners with a knife before I start the shaping with a drum sander on the Dremel. I like to start at the beak and work my way back. After I have a rough shape, I start to refine the beak with a diamond flame bit. I sand the head and body smooth before I start to shape the eye sockets. At this point, I lay out the wings and the feather groups within them. I shape the individual feathers with a diamond cylinder bit. A nail file works well to smooth out the feathers. With the top of the wings complete, I remove the extra material between the wings and the tail. When the grain is going the right way, I use a V-tool to separate the tail feathers. I drill an undersized hole for the eyes, then open it up with a diamond cylinder. Before texturing, I lay out feather groups to be defined with a diamond flame bit. It 
A wood burning pen is used to sharpen the edges of the tail and wing feathers. Then detail the quills and barbs. I like to roughly lay out the feathers before starting the texturing process with a cylinder stone bit. Holes are added for the toes that will be up against the body. I sealed the carving by dipping it in a 50-50 mixture of lacquer and thinner for 30 seconds. The excess is wiped off so it doesn't fill in the detail. The eyes are set using quick wood and positioned using a pencil eraser. The eyelids are shaped using a toothpick. Several thin coats of gesso are added to start the paint process. The first color is a light brown from white, raw umber, and raw sienna. This is applied in thin washes, getting lighter down the back. The gray is a combination of white, raw umber, and Payne's gray. This is applied letting the brown show through. The white is a mixture of white and raw umber. The final color is a black made from burnt umber, ultramarine blue, and black. After the majority of the color has been applied, the edges are softened with a fine brush. After a wash of black has been applied over the gray on the wings, white is added to the edge of the feathers. The beak starts with the gray and is washed with the black to soften the transition. Wood filler is used to create the transition from the leg to the body. The toes are shaped from leadless solder. They are glued in place with super glue, and the transition from the toe to the leg is created with 5 minute epoxy.
the epoxy is allowed to partially cure to keep it from running.